Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about doing algebraic division. And first of all, just as a reminder, I'm just going to turn to a numerical example. We've got here 3 quarters divided by 7 ninths. And it's quite likely that you've been taught in the past that this is equal to the first fraction, 3 quarters, and what we do is we turn the division sign to a multiplication sign and take the last fraction and turn it upside down. So 7 ninths becomes 9 over 7. And with this we multiply it in the usual way and get 3 times 9 which is 27 and then this is divided by 4 times 7 which is 28. So you get 27 28. So from this it would seem to follow that if we had algebraic equivalent which would be say the fraction a over b divided by the fraction say c over d then what I would expect is the result that we've got the first fraction a over b multiplied with the other fraction the second fraction turned upside down which would be d over c. Now to me this seems quite crazy. Why on earth do we turn the division sign to a multiplication sign and turn the last fraction upside down? Well I'm going to explain that at the end of the video. But for now let's just use this principle. And we've got this first example here ax squared divided by b cubed divided by a cubed over bc times x. Now I've purposely taken this example to say a cubed over bc times x because you can often get questions like this where this division doesn't necessarily extend to this part here. But we can think of this as a cubed x all divided by bc. Now you might like to pause the video at this stage and try these two examples. When you come back I'll take you through the work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now with this first one then, what I'd want to do is not really put equals so much. I'm going to say it's identical to because we're dealing with an algebraic expression here as opposed to this numerical type of question. So we've got the first fraction, ax squared divided by b cubed and we turn the division sign then to a multiplication sign and take this last fraction and turn it upside down. So it's going to be bc all divided by a cubed x. Now I'm assuming that you've watched my previous video on multiplying algebraic fractions because when we get something like this we try and cancel out any common factors that appear somewhere on the top line and we can cancel them out with any common factors that appear on the bottom line. And in this example I can see immediately that b is contained in here and it's contained in b cubed. So I can cancel b into b goes once and b into b cubed leaves me with b squared. I can do much the same with the a here. a goes into a once and it goes into a cubed a squared times. I've also got a common factor of x between x squared and x so I can cancel that out. x into x goes once and x into x squared just leaves me with x. So that's all the cancelling done and therefore what we now get is 1 times x times 1 times c just gives me xc. I could write xc but I'm going to write it in alphabetical order as cx. And then this is divided by b squared times a squared times 1 which is b squared a squared but again if I write it in alphabetical order not that you have to it would be a squared b squared. OK. Now with this is second example. What I would want to do again is just take the first fraction x squared minus x and this is divided then with the 10x 
and then turn the division to a multiplication sign and take this last fraction, turn it upside down. So we've got 8x squared minus 4x and this is all divided by x squared minus 1. Now with this example, it's slightly different at the moment from this example up here because in the numerators you'll notice we've got two terms here this one we've got two terms in the denominator here we've got one term but here we've got two terms I can't go around doing any cancelling yet until I factorize any of these terms here in the numerators and the denominator so if I factorize x squared minus x what I can do is pull out a common factor of x and that gives me x bracket x minus 1. That's the 10x, that's one term here made up of two factors, the 10 and the x, so we'll just leave that as 10x. And it's multiplied with, well, 8x squared minus 4x, that factorizes, I can pull out 4x as a common factor and I get 4x bracket 2x minus 1. So those two terms have been made into three factors now, the 4, the x, and the 2x minus 1. As for x squared minus 1, well this factorizes, it's the difference of two squares. It factorizes to x minus 1 multiplied with x plus 1. So I have got now common factors appearing on the top and the bottom. So I can cancel common factors out. I can see immediately that this x minus 1, for instance, will cancel with this x minus 1 here. I also notice that I've got a common factor of x on the top here, and I've got an x on the bottom here. So I can cancel this x here with any one of these two x's here. Only one of them though do I pick. I could either go with this one or this one. It's up to you. I'll take out this one anyway. So x into this x goes once. Are there any more common factors? Well yes, there's a common factor of 2 that goes into both the 4 and the 10. So we'll cancel those out. 2 into 4 goes twice and 2 into 10 goes 5 times. And that's it as far as the cancelling goes. So what I now am left with is x times 1 times 2 times 1 times 2x minus 1. So it's just going to give me 2x multiplied with all of 2x minus 1. So 2x multiplied with 2x minus 1. And this is all divided then with 5 times 1 times 1 times x plus 1. Well, 5 times 1 times 1 is 5, so it's going to be 5 multiplied with all of x plus 1. There's no need to expand the brackets at this stage, just leave it like this. It's in its simplified form. We've got one term on the top, one term on the bottom. If we expanded the brackets, we'd end up with two terms on the top and two terms on the bottom. Leaving it like this is the simplified version. Well, as I say, I hope this has given you some idea anyway of how we go about dividing algebraic fractions that have this particular style. Now, I did say to you that it did seem quite crazy why we end up turning the division sign to a multiplication sign and turning this fraction upside down. Well, let's just take this out and I'll explain why. So... If we now write this sum, a over b, in a different form, let's say we take the fraction a over b, and instead of divide like this, we write the division as a long line like that, divided by the other fraction, c over d. Okay? Now, in order to simplify this, what we can do is we can times top and bottom of the fraction by the same value. And it'll be like multiplying by 1. Now, I need to get rid of the b here and the d here to simplify it. 
So what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom of the fraction by B times D, BD in other words. Okay, so we've got BD there and we're dividing that with BD. I'm multiplying top and bottom then by BD. And BD divided by D, BD is 1. It's the same value. And if I times any fraction by 1, it's not going to alter its value. But what this does do is it helps simplify this situation here. What we get is that this B here, when we have A bit over B multiplied with BD, this B here cancels with the B there. So if I cancel that out, B into B goes once and B into B goes once, I'm just left with AD on the top. And when I've got C over D multiplied by BD here, again I can cancel. I can cancel the D here, D into D goes once, with the D here goes once. So I'm just left with the B there. Now when I look at what we've got, we can see that we've got A times simply D. So in other words, AD, or A times D. I'm going to write it as A times D, rather than AD. And when I look at the bottom here, all I've got is C times B. Or it's going to be exactly the same if I said B times C. So I'm going to write B there times C. That's what we would get if we multiplied these two fractions together. AD all over BC. And so hopefully you can see now mathematically why we get this result, that we have the first fraction, the division appears to get changed to a time sign, and the result is just to flip this last fraction upside down. And that's the reason why it works. So I'd encourage you to learn this particular technique because you're going to find that it's going to crop up so many times, this idea anyway, of multiplying top and bottom of a fraction by a particular value in order to simplify it. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope that it's been of some value to you.